Hey everybody, uh, this is um, kind of an attempt to uh, go through the multiple choice practice problems and give a little bit of guidance. So this is uh, one of the files on the on the um, website that talks about this uh, kind of two two styles of problems. One is uh, the pick your pick the reagent problem. The other is the pick the product problem, and it's eight questions, three points each, 24 points, and also there's there's two sets of them, so it's like 48 points, and the uh, easiest way for me to do it is just sort of uh, use my camcorder and go through the problems and maybe give you some, some hints, so let's try to do it. Right. So this is the first set of problems where it's like you're given uh, a bunch of reactions and you have to figure out which one of the uh, different reagents is appropriate and all the way down to 21 there and um, we'll, we'll try to give you, I'm try, gonna try to give you some general advice for this so let's see how, how we're gonna do this, all right. All right, so we're looking at question 4A right now, and um, what are we? What's going on here? Um, we're we have a bromide, alkyl bromide. We're reacting with magnesium, so of course that makes it grignard, and you know we can draw that in maybe. I do recommend drawing out the intermediates. Um, MgBr, right? Maybe on your scratch paper or something, but yeah, we have a we have a Grignard MGBR there, and it's like what are what's the thing we're attaching? Well, obviously we're attaching a one carbon building block. So whatever we're attacking, because Grignards attack things, it's got to be one carbon. And if you remember, there's only one one carbon building block that gives you a carboxylic acid. Even if we just kind of hunt up and down the list. Um, we can maybe look for things green your attack, like an epoxide. Oh, that's two carbons. It would make an alcohol. Um, what else? Other things to green your attack. Oh, CO2, that might be a good option. Because that does give carboxylic acids. Uh, answer number seven. Uh, Dibol is a reducing agent. So, anyways, it's a nucleophile. And yeah, means it doesn't make any sense at all. Maybe formaldehyde. That's a one carbon building block, but it gives a primary alcohol also. I'll show a review slide in a second. Uh, ketone doesn't make sense, and this is also a reducing agent, so 15 doesn't really make sense. Maybe, you know, this is a two carbon electrophile, doesn't make sense because you're only adding one carbon. And this is an interesting one, it is Grignards do attack it, I think we'll see it later. It's also a nitrile, so you can draw it out as a nitrile like that. But anyway, the, the correct answer, of course, is the carboxylic acid, number seven. So, CO2, and that's, that is answer seven. All right, so we got the first one. And so, we actually have a uh, this really cool summary slide, and I'm just using my camcorder to get it uh, for Grignards. It's part of the review session. All the different things that Grignards do, um, and you can see, you know, the earlier organic one things of a Grignard attacking a aldehyde to make a secondary alcohol, attacking a ketone to make a tertiary alcohol attacking formaldehyde to make a primary alcohol and attacking epoxides to make um, different kinds of alcohols. But remember with epoxides the connection is one away, one carbon away from the OH. Well none of those are appropriate for the problem we did. But if you think about other new things, CO2, that, that clearly creates carboxylic acid. Uh, we can also attack nitriles to make ketones, acid chlorides to um, first it makes a ketone, then it attacks again, and it makes a tertiary alcohol. Esters attack once, the same way as an acid chloride, to make a ketone. So the Grignard attacks, kicks off the methoxy, and then um, 
mixed ketone and then does the same thing. So acid chlorides and esters roughly do the same thing. But the relevant one is probably the CO2 to make carboxylic acid. We'll see the nitrile one in again in a second. Okay, so what's our next next problem we're doing? We're now we have a carboxylic acid and we're reacting with SOCl2 to do something and then we have to add you know a second reagent and that makes the this tertiary amide functional group and it's like what are we getting what are we doing? What does SOCl2 do and then what does the other thing do? So SOCl2 of course makes acid chlorides, so it's basically bottom becomes acid chloride acid chloride. And what's the thing we're adding to that acid chloride? Um, so what's the thing we're adding to the acid chloride? It looks like we're adding this piece. Um, and uh, that makes the amide functional group. And so it's like, what? Well, obviously, what is the reagent? Well, um, it looks like nitrogen with two methyls on it. So it's an amine, right? And, and so we have to maybe look for that in the reagent list. And, and also think about other variations of this reaction. So all these Grignards, epoxides. No, you know, look for the dimethylamine and oh, there, there's maybe ten would be a good option. Any more dimethylamine? Uh, and, and dimethylamine and C NaCnBH3. Well, that's a little different, and this does something that is relevant. Oh, I'm sorry, it's this one. You know, maybe sixteen here. Uh, dimethylamine and NaCnBH3, but that's a reducing agent, and that, we're not doing a reduction. This is useful for, it's called reductive amination. We'll see it a little later. Um, so, as of now, probably not, not 16 and anymore, no more. Okay, so back to this. It looks like we're probably doing that just dimethylamine, NA, NA, you know, it's HN, essentially that, and that would react with the acid chloride. Which one's up? Uh, up, down, off, and that would give us the the amide. So it's number ten. Right. Number ten. All right. So we got that. That's cool. Okay. And we'll 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 show the use of the other one. The the uh, number. Um, 16 a little bit later. All right, so now we have answer B done. What's going on with answer C? So answer C is um, looks like we have an amide and we're reducing the amide to an amine. So it's a reduction, it has to be a reducing agent and if you remember, you know, the, the hydride reducing agents, there's one of them that does this, amide to amine, and it's, it's uh, shown here, well, lithium aluminum hydride, right? Lithium aluminum hydride reduces an amide to an amine, is that anywhere to be found? Yeah, dibol is a reducing agent, it's not the, not the one we use for an amide. Oh, there it is, number four. Number four, lithium aluminum hydride reduces an amide to an amine, so that would be number four. Okay, so you're moving along. And just a reminder, where, where do we see that? And, and you know, that, how there's two ways to make amines. One of the ways is called reductive amination. And that's the one with the NaCnBH3, where you basically have an amine and like an aldehyde or ketone reacting to make a imine functional group, and then and then re reduce it with H minus. But it's the the H minus specifically NaCnBH3. But if you have an amide and you want to reduce the amide, 
you would, uh, well, you need an acid chloride, and then you uh, attach an amine, and you get an amide, and then reduce the uh, amide to the amine. So essentially H minus attacks, and then a little bit of stuff happens, and you get the amine. So that's kind of how that works with lithium aluminum hydride. There, you know, we're not really talking about the mechanism, but that is, how, you know, the reduction of an amide to an amine, one of the cool ways to make amines. The other good way is from the amine through this thing called reductive amination. Okay, so now we're on to a problem D, 4D. It looks like we got a ketone protecting group. That, you remember this thing's called an acetal. It's a protecting group for a ketone. And we need to apparently do two things uh, in order to get this to this bromo ketone. And uh, one thing is remove the protecting group. Uh, that is, you know, for an acetal, it's typically H3O, acid water. So we'll go hunt for that. And once you got the ketone, so assuming we make the ketone, you know, that's without all the other stuff. How do you go from the ketone to the bromo ketone? Must be something with. Uh, Br2, and if you remember, uh, it was a um, obviously I just said Br2, and then it's Br2 and acid, so it's actually it's going to be Br2 HOAC. Obviously, seeing Br2 would be pretty imperative. So I don't know. Let's go look for that. Let's go see if we first we need the we need to find acid, then we need to find Br2 and acetic acid. Hmm. Let's look around, looking around for H3O first. Okay, 17 will be acid to do the deprotection. And then, where's the BR2? Oh, there it is, number three. So seven, 17 for the acid and number three for the bromination. And there's no other bromine ones. Right? So, 17 and 3. The other, th other recommendation is sometimes you have a couple possibility, possible reagents. What you can do is come up with a couple possibilities and then figure out which is the better one. I think we'll see that pretty soon. Alright, so moving along. So we're, we're done with the first sequence to the end of uh, problem 4E. Now 4F. Okay, so it look, looks like we're attaching a methyl group, you know, maybe thinking methyl-related nucleophiles, organometallic type reagents. Now, of course, you know a couple different uh, organometallic nucleophiles. Um, so which one is it? Is it a, is it a methyl, right? That's we're attaching a methyl. Um, I mean, is it Grignier or is it Cuprate? Because those are the two, two main ones. So let's go hunt. Around methyl something, methyl nucleophile, mm, nothing up top, nothing. Oh, maybe five. That's a Grignard, and then we also have uh, six, which is a cuprate. Any other methyl type nucleophiles? Not really. Yeah, they're cuprate, but that's not a methyl. It's something else. Okay, so it's probably five or six. And we can maybe five or five or six. And so maybe, maybe even write five or six, but we need to come up with the correct answer and think about this a little bit. And if you remember, if you remember, cuprates are the um, things that attack these kind of alkenes. They call it alpha, beta, and saturated ketones. So it's not a Grignard. It's just really not five. It's going to be six. The answer is six. Let me start. Six. There we are. And it says cuprates, all right? And just to remind us, you know, the, the behavior of Grignards. We just saw this. The, the different things that Grignards attack usually direct addition to functional groups.
organic one style or organic two style CO2 nitrile, acid chloride, and ester. But in no, none of these cases do Grignard's attack alkenes like next to a ketone. But if you go to the next slide, the cuprate one, you can see, oh yeah, yeah, cuprates attack alpha beta unsaturated ketones, so these alkenes, and then, and then you essentially get a, a ketone out. So that's what we're doing. The other situation that cuprates react with are acid chlorides, and that makes ketone functional groups kind of like this. Also, this top one is called a 1 4 addition. We, we talked about that. Amines can do that also. We didn't really go into amine addition much. But anyway, it's called a 1 4 because it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops. Okay, so moving forward, after we did that 1 4 addition with dimethyl cuprate to make the methyl right there. Now we're going to do a little bit more stuff. Um, okay, so it looks like we're... Now I'm giving you a couple things that we're doing, so you're, you're, you don't have to do anything here. You see, oh, NABH4 reduces the ketone to an alcohol. PBR3, of course, converts an alcohol to a bromide, and then the Grignard, uh, MG makes the Grignard, so it makes essentially this Grignard through three steps. Now the question is, what is the thing that we're going to react with that converts the Grignard into a ketone. And remember, we just saw that a minute ago with the another thing Grignard's attack that give ketones, and it was it was the the nitrile. And we showed that a little bit ago, and it's a fun, easy mechanism too. How the Grignard attacks the nitrile, a couple steps, and you get the, the ketone. So anyway, that's going to be number twenty-one. which is the nitrile. And remember, that's the structure, uh, the structure of nitrile CH3CN, C triple bond N, but we all also just call it CH3CN. So 21. There we go. 21. What's the last one? H. So... It looks like we're, we're uh, attaching this piece, and obviously you think, oh, it's dimethyl amine, it's just like that, you know, and N with two methyls, maybe an H. But remember, this is not just attachment of that, we're also going from two bonds to oxygen to one bond to nitrogen, so it's a reduction. And so, so it's, it is going to be dimethyl amine. But because it's reducing, we just talked about that also. The other way to make amines, you need a reducing agent, and that is going to be, you know, let's look for dimethylamine again, and then maybe a version of dimethylamine with a reducing agent, and let's go up to the top and hunt, hunt, hunt for it. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we, I think we saw number 10 earlier, that was the one we used with the acid chloride excess being because there's it's going to be a base and a nuclear file. Any more of them? Any more? Any more? And, it, and then we get that down to the bottom. There it is, the one with the NACNBH3, that's the reducing agent. So, and that's the one that we use for reductive amination with NACNBH3. And so, going down to was that answer 16? Yeah. So what, what actually happens in a nutshell here is the dimethylamine reacts. You get a seven-member ring methyl, and you get a, a iminium. Kind of like that. It's a, you know the with the plus. Charges the intermediate, and then H minus comes in and attacks and reduces the aluminium, and then you get the final product. So, big thing is when you're doing reductive amination, it's not just the amine; it's you need the reducing agent, which is NaCnBH3. Cool. So that final answer is. 
think it's number 16. Number 16 is the answer. So let's put 16 in our little thing. Alright, so we solved all of these multiple choice reagent problems. Okay, so now we're moving on to the next set of problems, which are the kind of pick up, pick the starting material, pick the product type problems. And there's also uh, uh, eight problems, three points each. That's 24 points. A lot of a lot of points. So make sure you you um, really step through these. Is my recommendation. So let's try the first one. Okay, so it looks like we have a cyclic alpha, beta, and saturated ketone, and uh, I mean that's a good indicator, it's an aldol, because <laughs> that's how you make alpha, beta, and saturated ketones. So that alone, I mean that, that, that answers this, you know, what's an aldol? It's a reaction of a ketone or aldehyde with another ketone or aldehyde. Not, I mean this is closer to Michael. Number one is a Michael because it's a diketone and a Michael acceptor. This looks like a clazin, which would make a beta keto ester. This is looking maybe aldolish because the two ketones, and then there's this weird one that doesn't make any sense at all. It's probably not going to be the weird one. So it's probably probably leaning on number three. And we can actually maybe do a little. I'm going to do a very basic mechanism of maybe how this would work. Of course, of the out to, to see how we might get this kind of product, and that's. The alpha proton, alpha carbon attacks the other ketone. Actually, you know, maybe a better way to do this is redraw it. I'm just, I'm just gonna flip up the flip over the other side. There we go. So essentially what happens is, you know, mechanistically this attacks there, cyclizes, to essentially make the, I'll put the OH right there. Beta hydroxy ketone, loss of water. And that would give the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So certainly everything lines up with answer number three. So I think answer three is the first one. Aldol. Number three. All right. What's the next one? Um, so die die ball. You might um, memorize as dibaldehyde, which makes aldehyde. So essentially, your, your uh, nitrile gets reduced to an aldehyde, and you know phenyl. I should be able to draw it somewhere else. Okay, where's that? Let's draw the aldehyde form of this. I'll do it over here. Okay, so then, and then we're adding Grignard to that aldehyde. And so, methyl, magnesium bromide. tax a single methyl to the aldehyde. And essentially giving us a secondary alcohol. Okay, there's our secondary alcohol. Now what, what answer does that correspond to? Hmm, is it one? Nope. Is it two? Yeah, it's looking like two maybe. And not not three, the ketone, and then four, it looks like it's got two methyls, so it wouldn't make sense. Just two. Answer two. Alright, 
number two, we got that for two. Uh, uh, answer two for 5B. All right, so without going through all the details of this, you, you learned this reaction recently. Uh, this is pretty easy. It's the acetoacetic ester synthesis. Aceto acetic ester synthesis. And what's happening, I mean, this is an acidic, acidic proton, very acidic, and so base takes proton makes an enolate, enolate attacks the ethyl bromide, and then, you know, what does that make? That, yeah. Actually, if you look, that's, that's answer one, but that's not the answer. Answer one's a trick answer. Because the acetoacetic ester synthesis, H3O, cleaves this, this beta keto ester, to make the beta keto acid. And there it is, the beta keto acid. And, um, and then, and then, you know, I'm not going to, I can't do the mechanism in this little bit of space, but essentially this falls off, the, this, this whole right side falls off, and you're left with basically three carbons, one, two, three, one, two, three, so it's going to be uh, five carbons total, one, two, three, four, five, five carbons total, and uh, propyl on one side of the ketone, so, hmm, is it, not, not one, Two looks two looks possible, but there's too many carbons. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So answer three would be the good one. Oh no 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 three not three. It'd be uh, answer four. One two three four five. There's that piece we just added. Right, and so the answer is four. But I always recommend stepping through everything and make sure you account for all the reagents, all right? All right, so what's this next one? Uh, 5D. Okay, so it just comes down to knowing your reactions and knowing that when you have a primary amide like this, um, that the primary amide uh, reacts with any OH, Br2, and water essentially wipe, this wipes this part off. This goes away. That flies away through the Hoffman rearrangement. I, mean, I can't do the mechanism, but we've done it at Bunch. It was on the last exam and stuff. And so when all that happens, the what you've got now is it was two carbons, now it's one carbon. Now you got an amine. And that was the amine do with this Acid chloride, it just attacks it. Up, down, off. What does that make? An amide off the nitrogen. So, so it's gonna be CH2, nitrogen, you know, lose a hydrogen, so it'll be CH2, NH, and then the, the amide, of course it'll be This kind of molecule. Hmm, what does that ant match? One, two, three, or four? One, nope. Two, that's looking pretty good. It's, it's reversed. Three, four, four was what we had earlier, but that's the wrong answer because it's not the final answer. And then three is good, it's an amide, but you're missing that extra carbon, so it's two. So, the answer is two. Okay, uh, just a couple more of these problems, and this this goes back a little earlier in the semester. Not that hard though. It's so this is back to all, uh, all kinds, almost exam one even exam one stuff. Um, but if you have an alkyne, 
um, what you learned in exam one was that alkynes react with bases and, and essentially B dot dot takes the proton base takes proton to make the alkyne ion, uh, alkynal anion phenyl C triple one C dot dot negative and then that just opens up the epoxide and what does that make? I mean it's obviously the, the, it'll have the alkyne and then this four carbon piece, one, two, three, four, but the connection will be from this carbon to that carbon, oxygen bounces to the next position so which, what do you think is the right answer? Is it one, two, three, or four? I mean, here it is this looking pretty good because the the attachment whoa I'm at the wrong place. The attachment's right there, and that that attachment is next door to where the OH is. So that's probably looking good. This one doesn't make sense for the epoxide. So two, two doesn't make sense. Three doesn't make sense for this attack of what, what we're doing so so because you have those two methyls there on that carbon that does not make sense three's out so look in and four doesn't make any sense at all because of the nitrogen so it's looking like a one and it's on the other page I'll, I'll fill in the one later onto the previous page Okay, so now we're doing the Robinson, it looks like, it definitely has, you have a, a, a very definite Michael Donor, Michael Acceptor, and let's see if we can step through this. I usually, I put, I'm going to try to squeeze it in, into the space I have. I usually put dots on the Michael Acceptor carbons, this helps a little bit, so five little dots. Uh, so, kind of... The Michael first makes the enolate, the enolate attacks, and it's going to be essentially there to make a step A. I'll draw it up top here. Essentially the Michael donor. Now we have five dots, one, two, three, four, five. One. Two, three, four, five. Which one has the auction on it? Uh, one, two, uh, uh, dot number three. One, two, three. There's the O minus. Where's the alkene? Because we have you have to make the alkene, and then where's the alkene? It's between dots two and three. So that's dot one, two, and three. That's right, right there. Okay, so there we are. That's the first, that's the Michael reaction, essentially. The, the, these dot, these are dots. They're not oxygens or anything. Yeah, dots, carbon dots. Okay, and there's our alkene. What is this? Step? That's step A. What's step B do? Essentially, moves the alkene from one side to the other. So, the alkene will go from there to there. And our five dots. One, two, three, four, five. Where's the oxygen? Which dot? The third one. The third dot is one, two. Th mm. Oh, I flipped it over. Let's, let, let me let me try to make it more consistent. I I didn't want to do that. I just kind of flipped it upside down. So let's go back. Nice and consistent. Dot, 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 dot. Okay, now it's consistent. O minus on the third dot. 
Alkenes now on the other side. Okay, now you're ready for your Aldol. So I'm going to swing in come all the way around. There's the Aldol. Makes a beta hydroxy ketone. I got a, sorry, my space is a little tough right now, so let's put that down here. We're going to go down to the beta hydroxy ketone. There's the oxygen. Hydroxy. My dots. Oh, my ethyl. Ethyl. One, two, three, four. And there's the fifth dot is over here. And I got a ketone here. Okay, lastly, we, we're going to eliminate water, and you can see where the water eliminates from alpha hydro, hydrogen. Flies away, and then you get the, the alkene. And the, the, you can, at this point, you can see it. The, the final product has obviously it's the ethyl, like that's kind of looking correct. And then we have an alkene, and it's, well, it's gonna be, it has to be answer three. If you draw it out, you can see that. All the other answers are have the ethyl in different places, which just does not make any sense at all. So really, you know, drawing, through, drawing uh, the mechanism, or part of the mechanism, will usually get you to the right answer. And it's obviously three. Can't be four, can't be two, can't be one. Definitely three is the answer. Quick, um, you know, problem G uh, is a... Well, is it, it kind of look like the last problem? Well, I mean, it's got a Michael donor, a Michael acceptor thing. This is the Michael acceptor now on the left, and this is the Michael donor on the right. But this is just a plain old Michael, the, the easy Michael, not the hard Michael. Hard Michael would be the Robinson, which would like multiple steps, you know. Uh, how do you know there's an easy Michael, not a more difficult Michael? And that's because if you look at the Michael acceptor, there's the alkene, but on this side, there's no CHs there, it's, a, it's an ester. So, in order to do a Robinson, you would need to, you know, attack and then move the enolate to the other side. You can't do that with an ester. So this is just a very simple Michael. And so, essentially, this attacks there, that's the, the simple mechanism. Enolate, attack, and then double bond goes away, and then you can see what the product is very easily. It's just... Oh, methyl, one, two, three, four, five. That's the product of the simple, simple Michael. It's an ester with a methyl at the alpha position. One, two, three, four, five. And which answer does that correspond to? It looks like that, definitely not that. This looks like a 1,5 dicarbonyl, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. However, the methyl's in the wrong place. This is this looks like it maybe out as a methyl alpha to the ester, and then yeah. This is a 1,6 dicarbonyl. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Never gonna be the product of a Michael. So it's number four. Okay, last problem. It was multi multiple choice stuff. Uh, kind of just got to know what these reagents do. It's a standard sequence and I'm give you a great hint. Alkylation of the enamine. So, without going through all the mechanism, and it is a fun, fun, fun mechanism. I think you saw it on the last exam or the sample exam. What this does is it makes an enamine. Alkylation be enamine. So these guys react. You actually would need a little bit of acid in there, H plus. But anyway, secondary amine reacts with ketone. A bunch of steps to make the enamine. And then the ethyl bromide and the acid. Well, the ethyl bromide, of course, 
uh, you know, the simple mechanism. This is a very simple mechanism now. The enamine swings down, alkene attacks, kicks off the bromide, and then now that ethyl is attached at the alpha position. Like that. Then there's a series of a very short series of steps, water attacks couple steps, basically replacing all of this with oxygen and you get a ketone, so... Okay, there's the ketone. And so we have an ethyl next door. So, the answer is 1, 2, 3, or 4. That looks like a Grignard attack. Hmm, that's looking like an ethyl next to a ketone, that's good. This looks like an enamine with an ethyl, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it's close, but it's not right, and it's because the acid really removes all of that nitrogen stuff and replaces it with a ketone. So this is a close answer, but it's not right. And then this is a total bogus answer, so it's definitely answer two. So lastly, I'm just going to fill in the answers from my last worksheet. It looked like we had one, uh, three. And problem four, and problem two. I mean, answer two. These are all answers. Answer two. Okay, so I guess my general advice for these problems is uh, to um, really step through them. Don't just use your gut instinct. Make sure all, you utilize all the reagents um, that I give you because maybe there might be a reagent that does something at the end. I think we've saw, saw that a couple times. Uh, so good luck. Hope this works. So, um, it wasn't a perfect video because I had to jump back and forth a bit, but um, uh, then I was trying to trying to show you the mechanisms, but I, I didn't have too much space to do that. I would use your scratch paper definitely to do these problems. All right. Good luck.